the Australian Football Hall of Fame, where we honour men like Polly Farmer, the first bloke to kick the ball with his hands. And Alex Jezelenko, who gave kids across the country an excuse to jump all over their mates' backs. And all the other Hall of Famers that made Australian football what it is today. So on the 10th of May, we celebrate the true greats of our game with a tribute match featuring the best of the best. Magnificent atmosphere here at the MCG. The crowd has really built up the last 10 minutes. It's going to be uh, at least 60,000 plus, I would have thought. Great rendition, wasn't it, too? Just to get us in the mood. So, uh, who's tipping who? Gentlemen, let's get on the record. Robert, yeah, we know you're going for the big V. Yeah, I'm going for the Vicks, Vossi. Oh, I can't go past the Dream Team. I just think that they'll be absolutely awesome tonight. And with fear of not getting out of this box, box alive tonight, I'm going for the Dream Team too, Anthony. Ooh. Oh, I'm going for the Vicks with a goal after the siren, kicked by Jonathan Brown. Time for the toss of the coin. There's Jonathan Brown. Uh, there's the camera on the uh, field umpire there on the shoulder. And Andrew McLeod comes in too. So the big V wins the toss. They're kicking to the punt road end as we welcome this evening. Christy Malthouse and Andy Ma. Thanks very much, Corners. Jonathan Brown on screen, a Toyota ambassador and Toyota doing so much work. Great work for grassroots footy. That's a real focus of this entire weekend for the AFL. Every goal that gets kicked by the Victorians tonight, $10,000 going to be contributed to the Good for Footy program being run by Toyota. It's the fourth year that it's been up and about. By the end of this year, they will have contributed over $1 million to grassroots footy. So a very good reason to boot home a lot of Victorian goals tonight, Christy. Another good reason is for the crowd because they are already loving it. They've been here since very early today. They gave a massive roar after the national anthem. It's quite funny looking into the stands and seeing all the different club jumpers they've got on. I think they'll have favourite players rather than favourite teams. Although, as you'd expect at the MCG, the biggest roar was for Victoria. Stephen. Thank you, Christy. There's Adam Goods, Jewel Brownlow medalist, Jimmy Bartell still with that nice mouse over the left eye from the last home and away match he played. If Adam Goods plays on the wing against Richo, it'll be the two tallest wingmen we've ever seen in the history of the game. And Richo's been in sensational form for the Tigers. Good mates with Brennan Favala, as you can see. Well, they are wandering down to the forward line at the moment, Richo. Oh, right, here he comes out of the wing. So it is going to be and Goods, and, Adam Goods and Richo. Yes, and the other one I hope we get is Chris Judd playing on Daniel Kerr, his great mate from the West Coast Eagles. Now, a lot of the players are wearing their club numbers, all of them can't, of course, so it went to the player with the most number of games for his club. But Trent Crowe on, buddy. Yeah, two Hawthorne teammates there. Ben Rutten at fullback. Scarlett on Mooney as well. So it is mate versus mate. It is ready to go in the Hall of Fame tribute match. The 150th birthday of Australian football. And in the first ruck, it's Cox against Simmons. Simmons got the tap. Coming through hard was Johnson for the big V whistle. It's a free kick. It's going to the Dream Team. And it's going to be taken by Kerr, who gives it to Burgoyne. Burgoyne comes to the members' wing. It's marked out here by Stokes, who kicks the half forward, and there he is, the Richo man. Matthew Richardson pops it into the pocket. It's a clever kick, yeah. and it's marked by Pavlich. Pavlich on Jared White. So Pavlich with the football. He's kicked 20 go 22 goals, 18 this season. Should he have a shot, Fossey, or set it up on top of the goal square? Well, now he should just go back and kick it. 26 years of age, already five times an All-Australian and a four-time best and fairest winner. Pavlich has kicked a point. And weight would have been on Pavlich in the last home and away game. No, that was West Coast. They played, they did play Subi, didn't they? The ball into the outer side. Milburn leaping high. Chapman getting it back to Milburn. 
as the Vicks like to run. Steve Johnson up to the wing. Murphy, what a season he's had. He was going to go to Goods, but there's Ryan O'Keefe already. He'll wear a line out between the 50 and the wing. You can be sure about that. Murphy setting it up. Here comes Favola. Ben Rutten right with him every step of the way. Judd. Mitchell. And they shove it around. O'Keefe works it back for Heathshaw. Forced wide. Jonathan Brown can't get his first touch of the night. Just some quick handballs there by the Victorians trying to bring each other into the game. Chris Judd gets it, gets tackled, rarely goes to ground. Simmons against Cox. Cox with strength at the front. Got the tap down to Burgoyne. To John Cock. To Burgoyne. Now McLeod. He switches. So the Dream Team running out of defence. Here's Buddy. Lance Franklin at half back. Kicks in the direction of Richardson. And he's been paid a free kick for chopping in the arms against Murphy. And they're both playing offensively at the moment. Richo's trying to push forward and so is Goods. So Richardson just pumps it long. Why wouldn't you? So much talent up there. Back of the pack. Quick kick out of the pack was by Brown. That's Campbell Brown. There's Kerr. Almost collided into his teammate in Cox. There's the dream. As the big V put it forward to Sam Mitchell, but his kick only went as far as John Cock. He kicks out to the wing and finds his skipper in the clouds. Well, it's very much just getting used to the feel of it by the look of it, but boys. Kane Corns is tagging Chris Judd. And he's delivering beautifully. And Chris Judd will say, just can't get away from a tag. You'd expect this. I, I thought that Mark Williams would certainly put some tags on out there. And Judd being tagged by Kane Corns. And the thing about Kane Corns is that uh, he'll keep you quiet and he'll get plenty of the ball himself. He's a beauty. And Buddy Franklin, as we mentioned, being manned tonight by Trent Crowe. There's bragging rights during the week. Whoever gets up there. <laughs> Scarlett and Mooney. Oh, what a wonderful season. Lance Franklin, 36 goals for the year. Leads the way in the AFL. But his kicking is not the most reliable, as he proved the other week when he kicked 1-7 against the Tigers. And so far, the Dream Team have been able to... Their forward line is functioning pretty well, each getting a bit of it early on. Johnson. There's the big V worker to the wing. And Murphy's been prominent early, takes the mark, and he's off. Not sure what to do with it. He pops it over the top. It was almost a hospital handle, but great skills. It ends up back in the arms of the big V. This is weight as he goes for goal. It's across the face. And three, four. A point to Victoria. So, just love to see how far he's run here. <laughs> that is it's a good distance. Got to cut him some slack tonight, don't we? <laughs> oh, that's true. So Dream Team two behinds, the Vicks one point. Plenty of time for Bolton to work out what to do with it. No shortage of running options. Burgoyne, Corns, and now McLeod. Look at that. That was just sleight of hand. And suddenly the big running Dean Cox sends them into attack. Sends them again in the direction of Franklin. Points to Crowe that time. A fumble from Jardy. Doesn't miss it the next time. They sort themselves out. Wade's been prominent so far on the way out. We're going to see some hard stuff and one percenters like that done. The smother and the ball's over the boundary. And Wolsey, I would have thought one area that Victoria have to be conscious of is the run out of defence of the Dream Team. They certainly do have some good runners there. Here's Kerr. We know he can be damaging by hand. Stokes has a history of just popping up in the right place. But there's his regular teammate in Melbourne. Dangerous handball. But it comes off due to the run of Heathshaw. Heathshaw. Looking for Johnson, working his way though to the front. Did it really well was John Cock. Handballs to Cox. Cox to McLeod. And from a standing start, he kicks in the Kerr direction. And Simmons gets there first for Victoria. Does he keep it alive? He does. And holding the ball, so play on. Kerr paid the advantage. Now Cooney. Hey, play on! Well, it was an effective kick at the end of Stokes, who decides to go to the team thing and uh, square the ball up. And right. Burton, was he being held? Oh, yes, he was. Up. It's a free kick going to the Birdman. Against oh, Campbell. He plays Brown. on. And he kicks the goal. So Brett Burton gets the first goal of the match for the Dream Team. And Burton kicking the goal, playing on. Jumper was held there. And uh, Mark Bomber-Thompson... 
He's the senior man. Have a look at his assistant, <laughs> Kevin Sheedy. And that's a reversal of roles, isn't it? We just saw Scarlett playing on his teammate, right, Geelong yeah. teammate in Mooney. Dream team have already gone inside five to two. It might be six to two now as we see a bit of Buddy off the left. Was it far enough? It was. And Simon Goodwin, who's had a prominent role up forward this year for the Adelaide Crows. Three-time best and fairest winner, four-time All-Australian. Kicked 20 goals for the season and already... Buddy is showing his mobility. Well, it's certainly showing organisation too. When they're coming into the forward line, their forwards are on the move. Very dangerous. Now Simon Goodwin, been a wonderful midfielder over the years. He's shown he can be a potent forward as well this year. Well, Dean Cox has had uh, three hit-outs to advantage, my favourite Ruckman, but Jamie Charman, my second favourite Ruckman, <laughs> has replaced him. I do like Ruckman. Fraser got the tap, though, and he did it beautifully to Bartell. Power, quick hands, Pendlebury. Smitchell, advantage paid. The Vicks are away. Fraser to Pendlebury. His Collingwood teammate, but just knocked as he got the kick and causes the turnover. This is the run. Bolton. Here's Richardson in defensive 50. Stokes provides an option, and he kicks to him. He's had a bit of an early two. Matthew Stokes, little short one to Goodwin. Oh, there's Ori Hall! And Goodwin goes to Leon Davis. So they're teaming well, the Dream Team. Well, Vossi... Defense. Half of them are Crows. You've got Rutten, Bock and McLeod, so they understand each other perfectly. It's a real advantage to having a game like this. So they work it across the defence, as they've done very well so far. Richo getting so much of the ball, suddenly wished he didn't have it there. He got a chop out from Rutten as they try and sort themselves out again. John Cock. The Vicks will be stung into action soon, I reckon, boys. Yeah, and there's another crow in defence in John Cock, so there's plenty of them back there. Leon Davis confronted and so goes to half forward. There's Charman. Flicks out the side. Daniel Motlop in rare form last week with seven goals. And the Vicks defence is under pressure now. The ball out. This is what it's like to bounce the ball in AFL football. Brett Rosebury. Oh. There's the view from the camera. <laughs> that takes you right into the thick of the action. Charman again, the bustling work. Fraser, fixed with plenty of work to do. Leon Davis pops up for the Dream Team's third. So the Dream Team off to a fire, 3-2. And the marks at the moment, 18-3. I reckon the ruck advantage the Dream Team's got, you've got Charman and Dean Cox, two of the very best. And there's Charman. They are just going to make it really hard for the Vicks. So he's uh, stripped by Kirk, and Kirk's been awarded the free kick. And they're full of running at the moment. McLeod. Kelly hot on his heels. Oh, oh, McLeod, beautiful balance, great poise. He goes back into the corridor to Joel Corey, to Burgoyne. Kicks out inside 50, and he finds Havlich. So they are very well drilled at the moment. They're the just too slick yeah. at the moment. Just using the ball superbly. And They're the mark's 20 to 3. Yeah. They're not getting in each other's way also. We spoke about pre-game about the forwards getting in each other's way, but they're on the move. They're kicking to leads, aren't they, in that forward 50 dream team. They're not bombing it. They've got Pavlich and Buddy Franklin and Mooney. Gee, there's talent everywhere. So Pavlich from right on 50. As the big V supporters take a huge sigh of uh, huge now breath. Now behind there, let's check in. Here's a Port Adelaide message going out to Sean Burgoyne with the runner. I just thought as soon as I can get to uh, uh, Davis, I can't find him yet. Oh, yeah. Hope he understood it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Vic's defence under a lot of pressure at the moment. Scarlett trying to generate some run with his teammate Chapman. Did this so well on the last day of September last year. Robert Murphy, smooth moving, looking for Favala. Opened up for Bradshaw, but the door closed pretty quickly. Pressure on Bob. Yeah, Bradshaw just coming on. McLeod brings it in straight away. And again, the dream team. Showing a clean pair of heels at the moment to the Vicks. 
Peter Burgoyne. Using Griffin and getting them going to half forward again. Was that a free kick? Gee, that was it good wasn't. play. Scarlett, and it opens up now. Fair Foley ready, zone. Yeah, Fair ready to zone. run to receive. He's in the pocket. He'll take it. And that'll give the crowd something to roar about. Well, the crowd's roaring. Fed's taking the mark. Go back to Matthew Scarlett. Stood his ground, used his bulk, used his strength. Just got Motlop out of the way. Able to take the mark like that. And then he's trademarked through the corridor play. And that's why it gets there quick and direct to Fev. So. That is a great shot, <laughs> isn't it? What? <laughs> Brennan Favol, of course, second in the AFL goal kicking, 31, averaging 4.4 goals a game. He's spot on there, the Vixer on the board. So Favola has a break, Brown comes on, and the umpire, we're going to go to umpire Cam as he bounces the ball in the middle. Pretty. Here we go. And down she goes. Kerr tries to break a hole in the pack unsuccessfully in the uh, Victorians get possession. Milburn. Kicks to Heath Shaw. He's got it half back member's side. Waits for some options. He goes short into the middle to Goods. Yeah, he takes him on. Buddy Franklin provides the chase. And he did pretty well, Lance Franklin. Just made Goods panic a little bit and forced a spillage. But the Vicks get it back. Kelly, good shade of handballs. Here's Power. Power looks for Bradshaw, his Brisbane teammate. And she hits some lace out directly into 40 out. You've got to commend the Vicks. They're under pressure in that centre square. Buddy Franklin uh, caused the turnover, but then they're able to retrieve the ball. They continued with their share with handball. That is just a brilliant little chip pass by Luke Power to his Brisbane Lions teammate. Just weighted it perfectly. Nothing the defender could do to get a fist on it. 30 goals, 14 this season for Bradshaw. It's coming back. It's coming back. It's hit the post. That is an unusual miss for Daniel Bradshaw. 21 plays nine. Dream team in front. Well, let's uh, now talk live to the coach of the Big V, Mark Thompson. Mark, uh, the start, a little bit uh, suspect. The Dream Team teaming well early. You there, Mark? Can't quite hear us at the moment. Let's go back. Mark Thompson, can you hear us? It's a commentary box here. No, a few audio problems. We'll get back to Mark in a minute. All right. He certainly would be much happier with the last couple of minutes, though. The Vicks just look like they've settled a bit more bossy. Yeah, and they've generated just a little bit more space forward. Importantly, they're starting to win these contests and straightening up through the midfield. Yeah, Foley, a terrific option. Bradshaw's going to be down there again. Oh, but that is a super effort. Peter Burgoyne, anticipation. Peter Burgoyne's just blossomed since he's gone to the half-back line the last couple of years. Yep. Eight disposals for Burgoyne. Daniel Kerr to Griffin, a little clumsy over the top. No free kick paid. Scrapping again, Goodwin. Selwood. Now they can run. Harvey buzzing around. Confronted by this strong defence. He finally hasn't looked out of place, has he? Turned that one over. Dean Cox, Corey Enright, late inclusion tonight. McLeod left it behind. Vix really have just cranked it up a gear. James Kelly's been good since he came on. Brown! Brown, Bradshaw, Brisbane Lions combination. Gee, Foley's getting the pats on the back in the centre square for his dogged work. Daniel Kerr hurt too after that uh, collision in the centre square. Very ginger. He's coming off. Jonathan Brown playing on his ex-teammate in Craig Bolton, who of course now is one of Sydney's stars. Coleman medalist from last year. Of course, has overcome the court injury to play tonight. Would love to get things rolling from his point of view. He hasn't had the greatest year. That was yeah, a strange yeah. kick. He pulled, he pulled it then. 
I think we can try again with uh, Mark Thompson. Uh, Bomber, it's the commentary box here. Are you a bit happier now with the last five minutes? Yeah, much happier. We get to win a bit more ball through the midfield and um, we're looking a little bit more dangerous going inside 50. And did it help having uh, Foley and Luke Power just to be able to put them in there? They look like they're starting to win the ball around that area of the ground. Yeah, we just needed something because we weren't winning any of it, were we, boss? And um, the thing that I've, what I've uh, liked in the last five minutes is we've really gone after the ball and we've started to win some of it through the middle. And Mark, you're, you're certainly moving your uh, key forwards around. Brown, Bradshaw, Favola. They all look as if they're settled in. Yeah, they have, mate. Um, you know, that's the plan. We've got seven on the bench. So we only want all of them to play about 80%, so we're just going to keep throwing that at them all night. Thanks, Bomber. We'll get back to you later. Mark Thompson, the coach of the Vicks, 3-3-21, the dream team. But Victoria really starting to mount a run now. Luke Power, as we mentioned, has been influential. He's been looking for his teammates. And he goes again for Bradshaw and Brown. What well, a gain of power kick to advantage to the leading forward. You got the mark and there's the free kick. And how good's that being able to talk to a coach whilst the game's in progress? I hope, Fossey, you're as cooperative as that when you start doing just, it. Just like you were, yeah, just like you were Robert. But look, it is sensational and Luke Power has been important, no doubt. The other important factor is just a change up in the forward line. Bradshaw's gone there, Brown, all teammates just to get to know one another. So Daniel Bradshaw, that's a better kick, but oh, he's still... Missed it. Boy, the Vicks have had their chances here. I used to ring Robert Walls oh. up during the week as a young reporter and he'd tell me to get nicked. It was the well, hardest call, it was the hardest call was. to make. Oh, I used to sit beside him in the plane and I used to get told to get nicked too. So. Here's, the, here's the kick in. We get a great view of the kick in. John Cock deciding to uh, take the easy option and get the short man in. And that's Kane Collins, and he can take it away. Peter Burgoyne, by the way, 11 disposals so far. He's having a belter of a first quarter. Motlop attacked it and got pushed in the back. No, said the ump. Play on. Hasn't missed a target either, quarters, Burgoyne. And here he is again. Might get number 12. Good tackle. Clever tackle by Power. And he's been penalised. That was a good decision and well done by Luke Power. Smart play. And he wastes no time. He goes into the middle. And spots up Ryan O'Keefe. Oh, they've turned it over. Here's Cox. Franklin's got to beat a couple. He keeps his feet. Oh, Buddy Franklin, beautifully done. He must play for Hawthorne. And he's put it in the top tier. <laughs> well, this was the, the worry, I guess, with the injuries of Daniel Kerr. We'll keep an eye on that, but there's Buddy Franklin. And it just shows the, the, the stress and strain he puts on opponents. They know how good he is. Desperately, two of them tried to spoil. Should have been just the one up. Margin back to 16. Not really reflecting the last five or six minutes, which have been victorious, but they haven't capitalised. Mitchell gives them some footy out of the middle. Kelly and Brown in pursuit. But Griffin is there to apply the pressure, which he did well on Kelly. And again, Burgoyne involved in the clean-up operation. Looks like Griffin has moved on to Brown. That's an interesting one. Bolton's gone to the uh, full back line for the Dream Team on Bradshaw. Well, let's go down to the coach of the Dream Team, Mark Williams. Uh, Mark, you must be delighted with this first quarter. Yeah, it's a terrific start. Obviously, uh, we started really well. They've hit the post a few times, and uh, I thought they got a bit of control back in the game. It was a nice one to get that, uh, that last goal we got. We thought having a few Adelaide players uh, deep in defence, they just know each other's game. It, it helped early on. Yeah, uh, I think uh, that was a, a bit of the plan, picking those guys. You know, I, even uh, Nathan Bassett missed out, but uh, uh, quality unit always been hard to stop. And, you know, the use going forward is terrific. Obviously, you've got some brilliant forwards. And it seems like the forwards are functioning very well as a team down there. Yeah, you know, they've had a, a couple of days thinking about it, but all professionals, all happy to uh, share the ball. No one wants to be... Uh, you know, uh, a hero, if you like. They're happy to uh, be in a winning side, so that's a great start. Hopefully Moons can kick this. He's on 50 bucks if he misses. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's got it for you, Mark. You, you must be happy with your team Ruckman at this stage of the game, Cox and Charman. Yeah, well, you know, terrific players. I think Kerr's gone for the night, so they say now, so... Not sure. Uh, that's obviously uh, a bit of a worry for us because obviously they've got some uh, quality on ball as we have to make sure we uh, keep rotating. 
And be remiss not to mention Peter Burgoyne. He's had 13 possessions in the first quarter. That is just an outstanding effort. Yeah, he's a very good player, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Mark, we, th we thank you for your time. We'll speak to you later. Thanks, guys. Mark Williams, the coach. Oh, look at that. There's the goal on by filling out the card. Uh, that's a worry, Daniel Kerry. Got that in that collision. It looks like a lower leg injury. Um, I wonder if Christy Moldhouse or Andy Mark can fill us in on Daniel Kerr's situation. Stephen, it is a lower leg injury. It looks like he's got a, a kick to the, the shin area. He was actually in two minds as to whether to stay on the ground or come off and then obviously thought it was better to come off and have it assist. So hopefully it's not too serious. Yeah, well, Mark Williams said he might be gone for the night by the looks of things. So it's a blow for uh, the Dream Team. He's out suspended, of course, at the moment, Daniel Kerr. So at least he's got a couple of weeks to recuperate. Yeah. Well, it's every coach's nightmare, isn't it? <laughs> Evening to John Walswold. Bartell kicks to half forward and finds Pendlebury. And the lead's on. It's a good one, too, from Favola. Beautiful delivery by Pendlebury. And a very smart lead from Brendan Favola. And you back him from here. He's one of the best kicks in the competition. Vossi, a few years ago, the players used to make space to what we call the fat side in the corridor. Now they're prepared to kick it to the thin side, to the boundary line, more and more, aren't they, just to keep possession of the ball. Makes it a little bit harder for the player because he's only kicking at, say, half the goal face. But increasingly, we see that kick into the forward 50 near the boundary line. And if anyone can kick it from here, it's Brennan Favola. He's a dead-eye dick. And as always, you give a guy a rap, and he'll miss. Well, it's interesting you mentioned that too, Walsy, because sides have become so good at guarding that corridor. Often that's the only space that they get mm. now. Nathan Bock. What a terrific honour for, for Bock. As we said, shows great respect for that Adelaide defence. Oh, oh, boy. That's a gifted goal if the Vicks can capitalise. They may oh, not yet. That is unbelievable. Another injury. Bolton. It's Bolton down. Just courage by oh, Bolton oh, oh, to oh, save his teammate who coughed it up. Who said the players aren't treating this seriously? Oh, yeah. Have a look at this. Well, John Cock just wasn't alert. Oh, oh, it's yes. amazing it wasn't KO'd. That's a very heavy hit. The crowd just saw the replay. So the Vicks have got a chance in the last two minutes to capitalise. They've got an extra man at the moment, effectively. And Harvey is the perfect man for the opportunity to step up. Josh Fraser, super bit of ruck work. Ooh, that was just an accident. It was a double whammy. Yeah. We'll have a look at the ruck work here by Fraser. Super bit of ruck work by Josh Fraser. And uh, you get it to Harvey on the burst. Hook it round the body. That's the easy part. The hard part is the ruck work. Let's go to the uh, Dream Team runner and a message for Buddy Franklin. Just work up the ground a bit more, mate. Okay, you're in the chain. Yeah. Just work up. Move up. Yeah, work up the ground. <laughs> that is unbelievable to be able to see that, isn't it? It's Christine Nixon and uh, the Lord Mayor John So in the crowd. So from the bounce, Handle. it's Kirk. Oh, the big V get possession, and then Glenn, be uh, beautiful work from Fraser. And it ends up in the hands of Chris Chard, and that's a free kick, surely it is to Johnson for a push. Again, great ruck work from Josh Fraser. Craig Bolton stayed out there too, still on Jonathan Brown. So Johnson, the Norm Smith medalist from last year's grand final. That's a free kick against Chapman, and advantage paid. That was for a push. And another free kick, and again, advantage, is it? Yes, it is. And away goes Richardson. Good kick. It was a beauty to half forward, and it's marked by Corey. Gets it off to Burgoyne. That was Sean Burgoyne, and his kick finds Burton, who's already kicked a goal in the match. Well, that space where it was kicked from Johnson is a very dangerous spot in today's football. Kick to the open side of the ground, they turn it over, and as a result, they get a shot on goal. Burton from smack bang on 50. Just didn't quite make the distance, a rush behind. So 34 players 18, Dream Team 5-4, Victoria 2-6 is the big V bring it out from that behind. And Josh, got it. Josh Fraser has fed Brent Harvey three times in three minutes. Look at the acceleration again of Foley. Cutting a swathe around the wing of the MCG and giving for Vala the best possible chance to turn it on. What a mark. What a transference.
bounce of the ball from full back to full forward. And the ball just kept going. And again, Fraser, instrumental in getting this ball forward. Left a little bit early, Fev. Got the ride. Hang on. Super mark. Gee, I love Foley's dash and boldness, boss. He just takes off when he gets the footy nowadays. Big kick on the siren for Brennan Favala. Cuts the margin to 10. And the Vicks are well and truly in touch now. Yeah, well, early on, it looked like the Dream Team were just too slick. They're dominating through the midfield and then going forward and finding their big key forwards. But then about halfway through that quarter, they changed the midfield dynamic. Power came into it. Foley with run and dash. And now the forward line staying to function a whole lot better. So it's balanced up the game a lot more. Quarter time in the Hall of Fame tribute match. The Dream Team leads Victoria by 10 points. Sony, working with 10 to bring you all the best technological breakthroughs in our game. Sony's world of high definition connectivity. disposals in the first quarter outstanding by him one injury concern for the dream team and I, I guess for the West Coast Eagles for that matter Daniel Kerr has injured his leg Christy Mulhouse thanks Stephen yeah Daniel Kerr remained on the bench during that break receiving treatment too he, he said I actually went up and asked him it's actually Ooh. just above the ankle but it's the lower shin and he got a kick to it so it's a bit of a corky he won't return for the rest of the game but he says he's hopeful that he will be able to play next weekend. He's hopeful that it's not too serious an injury. So I'm sure the West Coast Eagles will be hoping the same thing. Now, Brett Burton has had his knee strapped up. He's right knee, but he's out in the ground, so he should be right to play. And Craig Bolton, after that heavy hit, is also right to play. Thanks, Christy. Well, World Vision is currently on the ground in Burma, where the situation is quite dire after this week's cyclone. The death toll has exceeded 23,000 and will rise further, unfortunately, as the country goes without electricity, water and food. Uh, CEO Tim Costello is in Burma reporting back the situation. You saw the... Uh website there on your screen www.worldvision.com.au please donate if you can as i said the situation over in burma at the moment is serious to say the least well we just saw peter burgoyne having a smile and a laugh with brent harvey no wonder burgoyne smiling he's had 14 disposals off that half back flank eight of them are handball receives he's an absolute gun harvey himself's had seven touches and a goal second quarter well, underway Milburn just cleared the space for Kelly and the Cats teammates link up beautifully. Scarlet away for Mitchell for power. Back for Mitchell. Bergwin couldn't hold on. They all got touches there. Scarlet and some run from behind from Crowe. And then Heathshaw is pretty used to being freed up. And another cat in Bartell. Hoping for Brown. Bolton, little swivel of the hips. And Brown had his moment but it just passed. And again, Burgoyne involved as the Dream Team come away. Bock hoping for Burton. Athletic, oh, but Milburn, steadfast as ever, got them going again. Mitchell back for Milburn. Could have gone for Harvey, instead swings in for Bartell. And then Kelly comes back. Crisp kick to the leading for Vola. Rutten. This is good. It's very quiet early. Harvey starting to have a real influence now. So $40,000 so far for kicking for footy, courtesy of Toyota. There's Mooney against Scarlett down the other end of the ground. And Cam Mooney won't be happy. Who would be happy playing on Matthew Scarlett? He knows you'll have to earn every kick against uh, the great defender. Uh, Burgoyne's got it for the dream team. That's Sean Burgoyne. Burton, who had that knee taped at uh, quarter time, seems to be moving OK. Good delivery to half forward to Pavlich. He disguises the kick very nicely. Just uh, couldn't quite find Corey. 
as Victoria gets it back. The oldest in the Big V team is Milburn, and he spots up power at half-back. He kicks into the corridor, Foley. Over to Shaw. And now Simmons. Good delivery to half-forward to Harvey. He's got a couple of goals. Kicks to a vacant man inside 50. It's Kelly, who didn't want to have a shot, decided to uh, kick to Goods. Wasn't the best option. And that allows Burton into the picture to take the saving mark for the Dream Team. Whilst Peter Burgoyne and McLeod are getting plenty of it for the Dream Team, they've got to pay more respect to Brent Harvey. Richo just goes as long as he can. Pavlich yeah. made it clear it was his footy. He's just a bit too strong and smart for Jared Waite. Just pushed him out of the way as that ball came down. They've kept him out of the play for much of the game so far. Here's the mates, Mooney and Scarlett. No free kick. He had Scarlett get in there without giving away the free. That was brilliant stuff, and he's still getting footy for them out of defence. This is Foley. Up to possession eight for Nathan Foley. Very tough for Favola there. More numbers in white than blue, although Richo gave Murphy a bit of a look in and then gave a bit of a nightmare for Burton. And the constant pressure oh, pretty well, good there well, until well. that high contact from Ryan O'Keefe. He was under pressure and he just thought his way through it, Burgoyne. Possession 16 coming up for Peter Burgoyne. The Dream Team just on the back foot a little here with the Vicks now yeah. within four. Jared Waite's been taken off. Pavlich just having the better of him the last five minutes. And uh, Milburn has gone on to Pavlich. There's bench cam with Daniel Kerr going off for some further treatment. He's not well and truly over. It's okay, it's okay. In fact, Cam Brown has gone on to Pavlich, and I worry about that because uh, Pavlich is so much bigger than him. Third man in was Goods. Tapped it cleverly to Harvey. He'll give it back to Goods and repay the favour. And the Swan kicks towards Brown, who muscles his way to the front, almost takes the one-hander. Did he, Mark? He has paid it. No, he has paid it in the end. I thought it might have touched the turf. I'll tell you what, the umpire had three things going through his mind. Let's see if he marked it. Yeah, that's a mark. Yeah. Well done, Jonathan Brown, directly in front, only 15 metres out. She just, just shows strength and skill to be able to take that. It was. It was brute strength, wasn't it? So, Jonathan Brown. Bangs it home. Vicks have quite literally had twice as much of the footy in this second term as the Dream Team, and it's showing now on the scoreboard. Jonathan Brown giving Victoria the lead. Cox against Simmons. Oh. Mitchell. Oh. Joel Corey with a boot in there, but Adam Goods is freed up. Oh. He didn't really have an immediate option. That's why he had to try and get clear to give Steve Johnson an opportunity. Been pretty quiet so far, just the three possessions. Kirk and Mitchell, two hard nuts in there. Two of the best at getting it away from stoppages. See if Goods comes over the top again. Not that time. He's just running forward in anticipation. The big fella is freed up. He hasn't got anyone playing tight on him at the moment, Adam Goods, and he's enjoying it. Steve Johnson just went and had a word to Adam Goods there. We he's still free in the so inside there. There Comes he goes it. again. That's, yeah. a, that's his oh. favourite ploy. Down to Steve Johnson, who was looking for a free. Hacked out by Bock again, playing in front. Crow has tightened up on Buddy Franklin. Lots of numbers back. Steve Johnson's loose, but he goes for Favala. And it's the Victorian forward line that's looking a little more potent at the moment. They're certainly getting more opportunities. Well, they're also winning the ball around the contest at the moment. We've got Goods, who's on the move. They're spreading from the contest very quickly. Gee, just, amazing. just a great jump. Whilst Feb's gone back to line up this goal, and there's Goods. That's the second time he's done that this quarter. To advantage, well done. There has been eight interchanges whilst Feb's gone back and taken 20 seconds to line this goal up. In career best form this year in terms of goal kicking.
And it shows again from Brendan Favala. Three goals for Favala, and here we go. Eight interchanges in the space of 20 seconds. Out they all come. Well, that's the sign. When a player takes a mark and goes back for a set shot, you're going to lose 20 seconds, and it just gives the players a chance to get off and get on and not lose anything with the, uh, the changes. So and Victoria, Victoria well on top here at the moment. As Selwood handballed to power, out wide to Judd. Snappy at his heels is John Cock. How many for Chris Judd so far? Just the one kick and three handballs for Chris Judd, but he's spent a fair bit of time on the bench. Charm and the tap it again. It's Victoria Crow doing a good job on Franklin. Pops it into the hole. Johnson couldn't quite take the mark. Desperate defence from the Dream Team. John Cox handles partially smothered. Harvey tackles. It was by Corns in the end. Well, we've gone nine minutes into this second quarter, and the Dream Team have not had one possession in their. 50, so uh, Vic's dominating play at the moment. Fraser against Charman. Charman went out with strength. And now John Cock quickly to Charman. Squeezes the kick out. And we'll have a throw in. They've been in seven times to two, in fact, in the quarter. Sean Burgoyne. One of the stars, but only three possessions so far tonight. Let's hope he can turn it on at some stage. Extra height. Paid off there for the Dream Team. Although the options dried up for Corey Enright and he sold John Cock into trouble. Judd was getting around a few that weren't even there. Harvey is finding the spot lately. That not a great kick. And McLeod tracks it all the way to the line. Well, a couple of moves made by the Dream Team. One of them is for Richo to go down to full forward. Trent Croach decided to take him. I think Trent would be happy to get away from Bunny Franklin. Harvey already with a couple of goals and looking very, very dangerous. Almost got his hands on that one. Sean Burgoyne did as well. Oh, Franklin, way down the other end of the ground. Again, Harvey going to work. And now Jonathan Brown off the left. Favala's not out of this. In fact, he's right in the middle of it. Straight on the right. He's kicked three so far. And that's only behind. 3-2 to Brendan Favola. What's Buddy doing? He's giving a run on the ball, Rob. Well, I've never seen Buddy in the defensive 50. 75% of Buddy's disposals are in Hawthorne's forward 50, so he's out of his zone at the moment. Charman takes the mark. And a long lead provided by Davis. And again, a beautiful pass. So Leon Davis for the Dream Team on the southern stand wing. Overcooked the kick to Mooney. Well, Cam Mooney's had one disposal, Matthew Scarlett. His opponents had seven. So we, we tell, he told us the other day that he towels him up at training, so he's uh, true to his word at the moment. I'm not sure if Cam was overly impressed with that interview. <laughs> we'll have another throw at as Harvey sits down. He's got a couple of goals next to his Look name. Guys, up there. Jonathan Brown with one after that terrific mark. Enright, little kick to Cooney, to Griffin. Here's Buddy. Buddy's going to kick his second. Badly needed goal for the Dream Team. Six possessions tonight for Buddy Franklin. And a couple of goals here is that fantastic, unique view from the camera on the goalpost. Did it easy in the end, Buddy Franklin. Coming back from defence to his more familiar surrounds. Three points the margin at the G. Oh. Gee, Charman was spectacular and got high. Goods, oh. right, able to ride it. Bartel, oh, going backwards here, the Vicks. Penelbury, normally good with his hands, end right too oh. high, no. Sure, back for Penelbury. Again, teammates collaborating. And now Adam Goods can do his thing on the wing. Just a little bit greasy out there for him. With Davis for company. Adam Goods has had an up and down season for the Swans. Charman, good bullocking again. Bartel looking for a free. Trapped in there. 
Yes, it is. Robert Murphy of the Bulldogs on Ryan Griffin of the Bulldogs. There's so, a lot uh, of teammates playing yeah, on each other, and isn't I'm it? sure they'd have a bit of a chat to each other, but at the same time be dead set serious once the ball comes their way. Fraser had no one to release it to. Enter Chris Judd. Sure want to give it back to him. And then for Joel Selwood. Usually great vision, creative stuff. Scarlet again. He's a defender that generates so many forward attacks. Brendan Favola shepherded there for Johnson in the marking contest. He did it in a subtle way so that the umpire couldn't penalise him. And again through the corridor. And just have a look at Feb in the background there. Just does enough to keep Rutten out of the way. And he's having a ripper game. And he's pumped up Scarlett. He just, as he was running back, he gave a good hip and shoulder to Corey Enright on the way through. And it produces a goal. So Victoria leads by nine points. Mark Thompson, coach of the Big V, joins us once again. Mark, you'd be very happy with uh, this little fight back after what was a, a relatively sluggish start. It was a really sluggish start, but uh, you know, since I'd say about the last the first 15 minutes, our boys have been pretty good, and both sides have got a lot of talent, obviously, and uh, you know, both sides are dangerous when they go forward, but it's a really interesting game at the moment. How are you sitting there at the moment, Matty Scarlett and Mooney playing on one another? Scarlett's having a huge influence on the game at the moment. Um, well, Scarlett's about to come off the ground, we've called it, but um, I thought Matthew Scarlett's been fantastic, and I don't think Cameron really wanted to be picked up on, to be honest. Just saw Adam Goods take a scream of Bomber. What's his role? Hey? What is the role of Adam Goods? Oh, sorry, mate, I just missed that question, but... Adam Goods, what role have you set in for tonight's game? He seems to be going everywhere. He's just playing and doing what he wants, but... <laughs> Great tactics, Bob. <laughs> oh, no, it... They read the game as well as anybody, and uh, that's why they're the best players. So, hopefully, together they work as a team and uh, um, you know see the little hot fires and, and fix them up themselves. Thanks for your time again, Mark. Mark Thompson, the coach of Victoria, as the Dream Team running out of defence. Here's Bock. Thumps it long, looking for Franklin, who got rid of his opponent in Melbourne, and has got the mark, and he's within range. How good was that? And the bock dash and long kick was a beauty, but Buddy just said, get out of the way. He puts the bump on Melbourne, keeps his eyes on the ball, and let the ball come onto his chest. So Lance Franklin from 55, and will suit his left foot. Yeah, that shoulder's the worry. He's been knocked around a bit this year. Didn't quite make the distance, which is unfranklin like from that, that territory. Here's another view of that Adam Goods mark from an angle you would never normally see. And he's certainly one of the players that uh, we hope continues to thrill us tonight. Judd finding more of the ball yeah. in the last five minutes. And Judd, Adam Goods again. Judd and Goods have been the ones who've lifted them. Jonathan Brown off to his mate. A throw, was it? Did he throw it? <laughs> yeah, yep. top decision. Yeah. <laughs> so the dream team trailing by eight. They would desperately need the next goal. They'd like the next goal. Franklin to Corey. Leon Davis. Gee, just popped up, didn't he? That is a great goal. It's his second. Here's the uh, umpire. Let's have a bit of action. Throw! I've got five minutes on mate. Behind the mark, now let's get let's go to the dream team coach Mark Williams. Uh, Mark, you've they put you on a fair bit of pressure. No doubt about it. You know they're uh, winning a lot of balls through the midfield and uh, putting our uh, defenders under a hell of a lot of pressure. We're hardly getting the ball out of the uh, the centre square going forward. If it wasn't for Leon kicking a couple of fancy goals, we'd be uh, uh, we'd be a fair way behind. Adam Goods, uh, how are you going to control him, Mark? Because he's just really uh, powered the last 15 minutes. 
Yeah, no doubt. He, uh, you know, he's going to third man up was pretty important for them, I thought, early. And then uh, he's off the ground now, so that's probably a good move by Bomber. And, and you've moved Richo to full forward? Yeah, look, uh, we're happy to swing him around a little bit, obviously. Uh, uh, we've got a couple of injured players on the bench, so that made it uh, a little bit harder for us. But, uh, you know, that's the way it goes. All right, we'll talk to you later on. Thanks, Mark. All right, thanks. Goal to Bradshaw. And Victoria leads by eight. I watched Adam Goods at that last centre bounce. Burton came onto him. He was on the line on the wing. As the ball was bounced, Burton just chased the footy and completely disregarded Goods. Victoria had the ball, a couple of handballs, and Goods marks by himself in 40 metres of, 40 metres of space. There are times to attack and there are times to defend. There's Adam Goods with seven disposals this quarter. Has a well-earned break. Here's Corns. Out to Stokes. Stokes to Cooney. And Cooney to Peter Bergoyne, who had such a dominant first quarter. He gives it back to Stokes. And the on ball is waxing at the moment as he delivers back to Corns uh, at half forward. There's Franklin. Campbell Brown on Pavlich. And oh, no free kick there, but unlucky perhaps Pavlich got. Didn't push tunnel the him, ball. did he, Quarters? Hmm, I'd like to have another look at that. Would have called it a free kick myself. That's a word that we haven't heard for about four weeks. Campbell isn't Brown it? wouldn't do something like that, though, Rob. The defenders, I think it's fair to say, are getting a little bit more latitude than normal tonight, which is probably a good thing. Franklin. Wrapped up by penalty, forced to release the footy. Foley's in there. Picked up by Motlop. Oh, no, surely not. No. <laughs> he can do it. Leon Davis. Still got a behind for his team. Two goals, one to Leon. And Victoria lead by seven. Quickly back into play, too. It opens up now, Chapman. Going for Jonathan Brown. It's a pretty open forward line. Did have some options away to the right, but goes for Bradshaw. Bock had the job ahead of him. Steve Johnson. Oh, look at that from John Cock. Oh, fumble from Bock allows Chris Judd in. Conkers won, but... Can't get through the next couple. Well, his teammates were signalling for him to centre it, and I think he was trying to. He just shanked the ball. There's not as much centering going on, perhaps, as normal. Vossi. No, you wouldn't have thought so. Again, which is, which is some a good of the thing. team rules are out the That's door. That's a good thing. No 15. So not 15. Burgoyne's got plenty of room to move here, and he kicks back to John Cox. And there's a couple of leads on the wing, and one of them is Cox. Just Have you seen the ruck battle so far, Rob? Oh, I think uh, I think the Dream Team won it in the first quarter, and Victoria in the second quarter have been much better, and they've used Goods to advantage, being the third man up. This is where they've broken down Dream Team. In this second quarter, they haven't taken a mark inside their forward 50. Burton kicks towards Richardson, well spoiled by Waite. Quick hand sure, back to Waite. Now Pendlebury, over to Judd. Cooney got a vital hand on it. That was almost a throw to Davis. Umpire let it go. Is there a goal coming up? No, Stokes didn't get the kind bounce. Ball forced out. Judd, gang tackled. Now, how did he get that handball out? Chapman to Brown, who did well in you, was under the pump. He did. It's a good kick, and he found Selwood, and he kicks to Simmons at halfback. Simmons through the middle. Boy, the Vicks are on here. Pendlebury. For Murphy, yeah. again, good protection provided by Jonathan Brown. He ran 60 metres to mark that Robert Murphy. I reckon Murphy is in career best form. And how did Chris Judd squeeze a handball out of that, Bossy? That's how. <laughs> well, he is a magician. Did you sledge him much, Michael, when you were playing? Who? Chris Judd. Oh, don't be silly. <laughs> Well, you want him to play better. <laughs> Two goals a game this year, Robert Murphy. Shanks that one. Oh, you've got to pick your marks a bit better than that. Just no, we tried everything with Chris Judd. We tried to put him under pressure. We tried sledging, and he still get 35 possessions. He's a jet. Corey Enright puts him under the wing and finds Brett Burton. And he kicks into the Richardson direction. It's a push, and it's going Victoria's way. It's going to be taken by Brown. Richard a bit perplexed by that. Hmm. Oh, yeah, the push was Pavlich. by Pavlich, yeah. 
Well, you know what the sledge was against Chris Judd when he played against West Coast last week? At the opening bounce, Selwood said to him, oh, you've still got the crook shoulders because they were bandaged. And Juddy said, yeah, that's because I've been carrying you blokes for six years. Hacked in by Johnson. I to thought it was good, wasn't it? To no avail. <laughs> Mooney to oh, Sean Burgoyne, and his kick finds Richardson. Over to Joel Corey to half forward. Lewis Stokes has played some good minutes when he's been on the ground. He kicks to Franklin, one out. His opponent Crow lost his footing at the vital moment, and Buddy will go back and aim for number three. We're giving you some wonderful world insights into the world of goal umpiring. Plays at the other end, just checking the cards, make sure he's got it right. I've got scoring duties tomorrow in junior footy. Don't think I'll be that good. There's Buddy Franklin for his third. Drives it home. He's having a good game. Well, we always knew the individual brilliance of the Dream Team forward line would be very potent tonight. There's Chris Judd. He's had 14 touches. Are they the two best players in the game, Brown and Judd? Well, for mine, they are. Charman. Goodwin was held, not spotted by the umpire. Dream Team getting things going again. Charman. Motlock waiting down, but boy. She's out to Gutsy, Mark. Trent Crow knows no other way of playing. Jonathan Brown, right out, right out. is he a vocal player? Yours, yeah, absolutely. Provides a lot of direction, sets up the players. He's a good leader. Paul Chapman, who's probably not having quite as damaging year as he did last year. For Luke Power, his 10th possession, a poor one. And here's Peter Burgoyne, up to number 21 now. Hi, hi. Hi, hi. This is Stokes again. And that's what Victoria have been able to do. They've just stemmed the flow of the Dream Team. They've just been able to get numbers back at ground level in defence. And they've got they've been able to run it out. So Goodwin's going to go long. Richo's down there. And so is Pavlich. And so is Burton. For a bit of individual brilliance. Oh, oh, very sure. He ducked the head, but <laughs> Buddy was coming at an absolute million miles an hour. And the free kick certainly there as Fraser's able to take it away. Quarters was very nervous then. Complete accident there, Michael. Of course it was. <laughs> Fraser into the middle. Really working hard to get it through that corridor, Victoria. Good hard running by Harvey against Griffin. This will be a good one on one. They go at it again. Right a helping hand was Kelly. He's taken to the ground and holding the ball. So free kick down to John Cock. It was the quickest prior opportunity of all time, I think. <laughs> Little short one now it ends up in the arms of McLeod. But a Richo man's loose and he attacks the footy with fervour. Dishes off to Goodwood. Here's an opportunity for Burton. Oh, just didn't get a kind bounce. Pavlich is in there. Could have tapped it to Franklin. Didn't. Dragged it in and has been penalised. Very good play by Milburn to wrap him up. Milburn was one against three at one stage. And he switches to Foley. And the Vicks are on on the wing. Campbell Brown. Good running from Bartel. Richo trying to close. Can they engineer a goal in 30 seconds? They reckon they can. Good. A little shake. And a long kick up forward for Bradshaw. Steve Johnson. Knows where they are. And finds a way to get right through the middle. Here's a start. Two goals for Steve Johnson. Loves to turn it on. Big crowd, including some legends of the game. Don't think, just do. And he did. Well, he just have, as a matter of interest, impromptu question, but where do you rate this bloke now in the competition? He is right up there, surely. Oh, absolutely. He, he is freakish. He's got himself fit. Here's the umpire with Buddy. No, but I don't know what happened with Brody behind the plate. Oh, right? really going all over. Yeah, but just come on. Bit of counsel. Yeah, he, he is a, a gun, Steve Johnson. He's got himself fit. He's confident. He's played in the Premiership. He's been All-Australian last year. He's in this Victorian team and uh, had the pleasure of speaking to him on Thursday night. And he's just delighted to be out there tonight playing with the best. Well, he, he is one of the best. 
Clearance goes the Dream Team's oh. way. We've got a nice close game, which was what we were after. Full of highlights. And Victoria lead at the main break in the Hall of Fame tribute match by eight. 9.862 to 8.654, Michael Roth, Foss and Robert Walls. Well, it's been a really good uh, first half of football. It's entertaining, it's fast moving. Look, the players are really going out of their way to share the ball. I think that was evident with the Dream Team in the first quarter. They had all of those talented players up forward. They went a bit quiet, started that second quarter, the Dream Team. Victoria started to bring it in the corridor, mainly due to Scarlett and Judd and Goods, who I thought were really good. But, hey, the game's up for grabs. Site. It is the backdrop of Melbourne in front of the MCG. Absolutely spectacular pictures from the top of the Epworth Hospital. Magnificent sight. From a magnificent night, it's not such a great night for the Dream Team. Certainly not such a great night for the West Coast Eagles. Christy told you before about Daniel Kerr. The reports out of half time suggest that Daniel Kerr may have a cracked fibula. He's been taken to hospital. He was very proppy on the outside of that shin, as you saw before. It looked like a pretty innocent cork to begin with. We do believe he's been taken to hospital for precautionary x rays. He said that he was okay. He spoke to Christy when he was talking to her on the bench earlier, but for precautionary reasons, since they have taken him to hospital for West Coast Eagles supporters hopes. Let's uh, keep our fingers crossed that it's not too bad. The other one, of course, is Brett Burton. We saw him getting the right knee strapped up at quarter time. He did seem to be proppy when he came off the ground halfway through that second term. He has come back out with the team to commence the third quarter. Just having a look behind me now, he's going to start the third quarter on the bench. You can see him working his way there now. No such troubles in the Victorian camp. 100% clean bill of health over there. All clear for the big white V. Back to you, lads. Thanks, Andy. Well, let's keep our fingers crossed for Daniel Kerr. His uh, season could very quickly go from bad to worse, but uh, it's just precautionary at this stage. Let's hope it's OK. Just looking at the Dream Team players going to the bench, you've got Mooney and Pavlich, two of their key forwards, starting the game on the interchange bench. Burton's there as well, so three of the starting six forwards of the game are now on the bench. We look at the Dream Team forward line. And uh, you've got Richo going down into the forward line. Buddy Franklin, Stokes, that's their defence there. But there's Buddy up the forward end with Motlop. They've gone a bit smaller. They've got, certainly well, gone smaller. They've definitely gone smaller. And Bock is on the interchange bench also, well as Charman. So they're definitely going for speed in this second half. It's interesting with Richo, isn't it, going forward? I, I think he's played a super start of the year, playing as a oh, winger. Bit of a blue one. Oh, Hayden Kennedy. Hayden Kennedy. He touched him with a feather. He called one more. So, controversial start to the third quarter. I was about to say there was a bit of feeling late in that second term, and it certainly uh, continued as we start the third quarter. As Victoria win the ball back, and Josh Fraser marks at half back. Kicks to Johnson. In two minds, run down, free kick. Great stuff from Sean Burgoyne. Yeah, no advantage paid here, so free kick coming back. Sean Burgoyne's going to take it. And there was the run down. To his brother Peter. That's good. And that's it is. Courageous mark taken by Heath Shaw, who dishes off to Goods, and there's uh, Vicks peeling off everywhere. Power will get it. And he kicks to another loose stick at half yeah. forward. There's loose Victorians everywhere. Pendlebury gives it to Foley. Foley chips, looking for Murphy. He got there in the end. Now a snap. It's from Foley. It's close. It's close. It's a goal. Great start for Victoria in this third quarter. I love Nathan Foley's courage to run and bounce and carry whenever he gets the football. Terry Wallace at Richmond has encouraged him to do that. He's become a very, very important player to them. Big scrap in the middle. The dream team under the pump. This is 
I think the biggest margin the they've faced in the match, man. 14 points. Kane, Bok Kane. has been moved on to Goods. Now, something had to be done about Adam Goods, and they've had half time to think it through, and they've decided to put Nathan Bok, the defender for the Crows, out on the wing on Adam Goods. I think that's good coaching by Mark Williams. I think that's actually in right, Rob. Sorry. <laughs> He's wearing Bok's number. He's wearing Bok's number. <laughs> <laughs> Does take a little bit of getting used to. Joel Corey, the extra man up that time. O'Keefe couldn't be constrained. And Heath Shaw, again, teammates combining. Or Fraser, oh, there's a bit of pinball going on. Or Ryan Griffin, I think it is, who's gone down. And his teammate, Robert Murphy, has taken the mark. Let's hope. His heart's in mouth for the Bulldogs supporters at the moment. It's a good old-fashioned hip and shoulder, wasn't it? Oh, no one went the ball. Ooh, Ooh, I think it was an accidental elbow to the throat. Well, no one wanted the ball. It would be nice if someone went at the ball. So, Robert Murphy. With the spoils. And to give the Vicks a very commanding lead in this match. And it's worked back nicely. They've kicked two in a minute. The good news is Ryan Griffin's OK, and I think he's uh, sharing a joke with his uh, Bulldogs teammate, Robert Murphy. Well, from a uh, the Dream Team's perspective, they appear very flat at the start of this third quarter. They have to start generating some run. If they've got a smaller brigade out on the field, they need to run and carry and back themselves in and break open the play, because at the moment, they're being outdone in that area. Some headaches for Mark Williams. Victoria by 20 points. has the footy and there's Foley good handball under pressure to Pendlebury and again loose Victorians Goods is one of them kicks in the Harvey direction good use of the body by Brett Harvey can he follow up his work he can well done by Harvey Johnson from the impossible angle squares it up looking for Favola got to beat two of them gave away the free kick Dean Cox hi so free kick going to Cox he wastes no time. That was the free kick for over the shoulder. Marked at half back by Goodwin. Kicks to the wing. And taken here by Sean Burgoyne. Now this is better running. Joel Corey's worked hard. He's about 55 from goal. He kicks into the pocket. Leon Davis against his Collingwood teammates. He's going for holding the ball. <laughs> Pretty good pick up by Davis. Yeah, Even better tackle. Kicked it away, Lance. And the 50 metre paid against Lance Franklin. Here, please. Jack, let's go. Luke. So, Jared Wade. Swear on now. Bit of action in the crowd somewhere, I think. As Wade goes to centre half forward, not sure what he was trying to design there, but it's. All the dream team. This is what they were doing early in the game when they were really cutting the Vicks up. Joel Corey with good depth on the kick. Motlop oh, yeah. hasn't done a lot yet. And here's his opportunity. Yeah, there's a fight in the crowd, Hutto. That's what all the, well, all the yelling's about. And Adam Good's disappointed with himself not to get a fist on that ball. He had to sit and missed it. Missed the spoil. A good old fracar in the crowd. The old fracar. As Daniel Motlop does what the Dream Team needed him desperately to do. And after that last goal to the Dream Team, Matthew Scarlett's been brought on. Andrew Demetrio in attendance. And Scarlett goes straight on to Motlop. Fraser went up early, but the uh, Vic still got the footy. Selwood towards Brown and the big man in strong in front of Bolton who was disappointed but there was not much he could do with that big frame in front of him. They're missing Darren Glass aren't they? Yeah. Dream time. Just a nice little bit of contact there and holds his ground Jonathan. Yeah just strong body wasn't it? So Jonathan Brown the captain of the big V has kicked one. This to stretch the margin once more to 20. Kicking from about 52 metres at the punt road end. It's a thumping kick. 
just missed. One goal, two to Jonathan Brown. And here we go. Here's uh, Andrew McLeod. Yep, thanks, Kicking in, just goes the short one. Oh. And he finds Corns, who hasn't been prominent tonight like he usually is. Oh. To McLeod. Oh. And over to John Cock. And all of a sudden, the well's dried up. There's not much on offer, so he's forced to just prop. Handballs to Peter Burgoyne. He's got nothing to go to either, so he gives it back to John Cock. Well, there's no one really running. They're, they're all standing there with their hands open, but no one's prepared to run through the lines. Well, they've got a wall back there at half-back, the Victorians, and it's paid handsome dividends because they forced the turnover. Now can they make them pay, Victoria? As Judd gives it to Heathshaw. Favola. To Chapman. Favola's in the pocket, and he takes the slider. If you lose possession... The opposition will rebound and usually make you pay. Players of this class, once they get it in their hands, they're going to hit the target. They're all flat-footed, Wolsey. They're all standing around calling for the ball and no one really Brendan, taking the bit between Brendan, the teeth. The and as a result, the turnover eventuated. He's had a good night for Vola. Three goals, two. In the home and away season this year, he's got 31-14. Starts it right. It's coming back. Magnificent. Magnificent. Four goals to the fifth. He's an amazing player, Brendan Favola. In this game, he's had six kicks. All have come from marks. Six kicks, six marks, no handballs, four goals, two behind. So he's scored with every disposal. And he loves the MCG, Rob. He's kicked at least seven goals three times here or more this year. Simmons with the acrobatics of the ruck work. Bit of a shove for James Kelly. Judge just waiting for this to come out the side. It didn't get out. No prior opportunity. Thanks, Jamie. Let him up there, mate. We'll lock him up. Here's the Charman versus Simmons battle. And they go again. In the face. Troy Simmons kick. So the Dream Team with a lot of work to do here. Pendlebury's been able to sneak down. Goodwin did well not to give away the free. Powers there ready to lend a hand. He still might need to. Oh, got a kick. Inventive stuff from Pendlebury. The Vicks lining up. Powers for Bartel. Now there's four or five out at half forward. Heath Shaw's number comes up off to Jared Waite. That wasn't all that smart. Heath Shaw goes in to make amends, and they still might. Extra numbers paying a handsome dividends for them. Selwood's kick into the space. Tough one for Enright. He handled it pretty well. Burgoyne. Gee, still very speculative handball. The Dream Team seems to have lost all their flow and intensity. He had nothing to go to, though, Hutto. I mean, again, there was no leads offered, being offered from the wing. Yeah, they've lost their initiative, Dream Team. Looks like Victoria getting on top. Clearances 5-1 Victoria's way in this term. Burgoyne. That's a good one. It was to Griffin, who's recovered from that heavy knock. Good to see. Gives it off to Franklin. You might all be able to kick a goal from here, buddy. He's got three. No, it's come off anyway because it's marked by Leon Davis. Pretty much in the goal square. Here's the mark here. A badly needed goal coming up for the Dream Team. Oh, two Collingwood teammates playing on each other there. Heath Shaw and Leon Davis. Yep. Daniel, take him out, please, Campbell. So Leon Davis has been handy. He's kicked two. Pavlich coming on. And he slots it. So three to Davis. Well, you know they're not out of it because they've just got so much talent. If they can get things going, as we saw there, the run of Griffin and the brilliance of Buddy Franklin and Leon Davis, who's uh, certainly enjoyed himself tonight. Margin at 15. Charman. Thumper. Melbourne, great anticipation, got a little nudge, a little chop from Pavlich. Right out, Stacey Messi. And the great mates, Melbourne and Scarlett, linking up. Wasn't perfect service, but good enough for Simmons. And he can dart away. Good ball for Kelly. They're still on the overflow. The lines are going down. Power into the pocket for Steve Johnson. 
you would have seen Luke Power do that a lot, Fossey. Just those little chip kicks into the forward 50. He's got a good understanding of forwards on the lead. Yeah, he sure does. He doesn't overkick the ball. He lets them run into it. Gives the forward every chance. Uh, the Norm Smith medal winner, Steve Johnson, just drops a little bit short. Floats over the back, Bartel still in the mix. Harvey. Oh, he kicked the goal, but the whistle had already blown. And around by the spoil of sport on that occasion. Brent Harvey actually hasn't been kicking a lot of goals this year for North Melbourne, which is very unusual. Victoria still attacking. Charman, Johncock, Stokes had to be slick and was. Only one option, that's Burton. He's surrounded by Victorians out there. <laughs> Showed us a trick or two. So plenty of ammunition on both sides to come back when required. Let's rejoin the coach of Victoria, Bummer Thompson. Bomber, you seem to have taken control of the game, but I guess you've got to be pretty wary with all the talent they've got in their lineup. Oh, absolutely. It's, um, yeah, it's, it's a long way to go, and uh, both sides will be able to kick goals really quickly. And, um, look, I think they've just kicked they, you know, they, they might end up kicking the last two goals. And, um, so, yeah, there's got to be a bit alert still. Well, I'm just interested in your address to the midfielders in particular after quarter time. Uh, what were your instructions to them? Because at that point, they were getting well and truly beaten. Uh, we didn't start well. We, I thought we started pretty nervously and uh, just really exposed our defenders. But I, uh, I wasn't too harsh on them, mate. You can't be too harsh on the, you know, on the players over there. And just told them just keep, uh, keep designing the, the setups the way they want them and the way we, we talked about, and keep boring in and, and start winning some balls or giving forward some some um, some ball and, and keep it out of their forward line. And Mark, the interchanging of the players, who calls that? Are they uh, organised before the quarter? Are the players given control to make their own changes if they feel they'd like to? They know, the midfielders are up. If they go on, they just go as hard as they can for as long as they can. If they feel like having a break, they run to the bench. We've all sort of talked about who's next on. So no, we're seven. It just throws a few different challenges, but it's, uh, it's been quite exciting. And, um, and I think it's worked out pretty well. The players have been quite soft off the ground, and uh, we're keeping the intensity. Thanks, Bummer. Appreciate it. And in the meantime, Motlot's kicked his second goal and it's back only to a nine-point ball game in favour of Victoria. And here come the Dream Team again. Sean Burgoyne looks for Franklin against Scarlet now. It's the matchup we were looking forward to later in the year in round 17. We are. The Hawks take on the Cats. We've got a little taste of it tonight. There's, there's no doubt that I reckon the backmen are getting a lot more latitude than normal tonight. Vossi, do you agree or not? On the, on oh, the chopping of the, the rules. Well, it seems like the umpires have just let things go a little bit more oh. than usual. Uh, we want to see that. But he's just given the don't argue to his uh, teammate. Sam, Sam Mitchell. Mitchell, it's right on the line here, Burton, an opportunity for the Dream Team, keeps it alive. Can't wait for a replay of that one, Motlop, ball still alive, Stokes, handball into the uh, hot spot. Desperate stuff from Foley and he concedes the rush behind, let's have a look at Buddy against his Hawthorne skipper, Sam Mitchell. Right oh, across the Adam's throat. Apple. <laughs> Umpire oh, says no, play on, boys. That was accidental. Yeah, that was accidental. Absolutely no question about that, Michael. <laughs> Wouldn't that oh, be his teammate? If he gets reported and has to miss weeks for hitting his teammate. <laughs> well, well, McLean with the opportunity. Look, they're lining up the, I was going to say the Port Adelaide players, the Dream Team players, and it's Matthew Stokes who pops his head up first to take the mark. I wonder if they'll call the witness on that one. Yeah. Quarters. <laughs> <laughs> what do you reckon? Will they, will they converse during the week? No. Averaging 18 disposals and two goals a game to earn his place in this company. Matthew Stokes, been a wonderful story over the last couple of years after finding it hard initially to get drafted. And he converts again. Two points of difference in favour of Victoria. As it goes down the middle, let's go, go to the Dream Team coach, Mark Williams, and Mark, a great little fight back the last five minutes. Yeah, look, uh, there's been a lot of changes going around, but uh, 
you know, the boys have kept at it. They, uh, you know, they, they said at half time they wanted to do everything uh, as far as fighting out this game. Don't want to just give in, so uh, it's important to them. Marcus started this third quarter with a smaller forward line with uh, Mooney and Pavlich on the bench. What was the thinking behind that? Uh, look, uh, it's, a, it's a little bit to do with holding the ball in as, re as well as uh, just marking the ball. So we thought we were a bit tall and a bit, uh, uh, you know, not, not lively enough to uh, turn over the ball or hold it in when they were marching it out. So uh, it's been some lovely picks of goal. Isn't it? Right, OK, fair scoring for Victoria. And what about those changes? Don't for me, Bossy. You want to be a coach? <laughs> Come on, mate. mate Put it on look, the line, mate. You look nice and comfortable there at the moment. Uh, what about what about McLeod? What about McLeod in the guts, mate? Don't get change some, the subject, Bossy. He was asking you a tough question. Well, you know, he's got a tough question. And uh, McLeod's on the bench, mate. Well, would you like to get him in the midfield? Get It'd some run through there, call. mate. We've actually just put. Um, Peter Berg on in the midfield, so it's almost exactly the same. So you're not not far off. Uh, but I think Andrew's been on the ground for 100 percent of the time, so we want to give him a, a rest. He's done a terrific job so far. And you thought that you'd tag Goods with Enright in this third quarter. It's, it's been a good move because Adam Goods had little impact in it. Yeah, that's right. He only had eight possessions at half time, but he had two or three of those third man ups that uh, probably hurt us a bit. So um, oh, big turnover there in the handball through the centre square. It really hurt you. Thanks, no, Mark. Keep going. Good on you guys. See you later. Thanks, Mark. Mark Williams there, the coach of the Dream Team. As they go deep into attack again, Campbell Brown for Victoria saves the day. Handles over to Heath Shaw. He kicks towards Murphy. He's against his Bulldogs teammate and Ryan Griffin. Great contest. That Great Griffin contest. wins out. Well done by Ryan Griffin. who got a heavy knock earlier in this quarter. He goes to Corns, to Stokes, who again has been busy in this third term. Stokes gives it off to Burgoyne. Back to Stokes. And his kick to Goodwin misses the target. And we've got a turnover here as O'Keefe busts the tackle. And on the left, he hits his skipper, Jonathan Brown, on the chest. Seems like the don't argue is back in vogue, isn't it? The umpire's not picking it up. High ball from Brown. Chapman had to stand a long time. Time to get nervous. He was pretty strong at it, but just couldn't complete it. Favola, not a great handball. Joel Corey with the steal. And the dream team's on. Burton, they're full of running. Nothing immediately ahead. He might have to go back before they can go forward. Although Franklin calls for it. Good running from Cooney. He hasn't done an enormous amount. There was some doubt on him coming in. Nice little sidestep on Judd. Not great disposal. And Goods has plenty of time to take the mark. And now it's the Victorians' turn to go forward. Fraser sliding in. Goods kept on coming. Murphy's a longer option. Goes to Steve Johnson instead. Goods for one more go. Great stuff from Rutten. And now it's the Dream Team's turn again. Pavlich back behind the ball and striding forward. Just racing from one end to the other at the moment as Pavlich pumps it long. Scarlett just nudged under the ball by his teammate Mooney from Geelong, but he couldn't stand up. He got it over to Stokes, though. Stokes, the left foot snap has missed. And that was Karen Mooney's big chance, and he knocked it up. <laughs> it was. He put Scarlett under the footy, and then it hit his bread basket and dropped down. We'll have a look at it here. And the reason why Pavlich was back there too is because he's moved into defence. He's now picking up Murphy. That's a good move, I think. It's a free kick to Victoria here across half back. Pavlich has played everywhere. In fact, he's walls here and you're all Australian. Mates have picked him in just about every position, haven't you, over the years? I think he's played... Uh, he was full back all Australian a few years ago and, of course, played as a forward oh, sport. at all Australian many times. Peter yeah. Bergwin, by the way, had up to 29 disposals for the match eight this quarter. Oh, well, Jonathan Brown here. just grabbed Craig Bolton and slammed him into the ground. Did he play full back that year that you named him full back, was he? Uh, he would have been there a couple of times, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he went back once, I think. Here's Foley. What are you saying? <laughs> Goods. Oh, some heavy treatment from Enright. And it opens up for Josh Fraser. Now Robert Murphy. As we said, Pavlich for company. Bradshaw's back in the goal square. Jonathan Brown's going to move into the space. He goes longer for Bradshaw. Chapman. Oh, a bit of Charlie Chapman. Well done. And back out to 13. Chapman's first for the night. Best and fairest winner at Geelong, 2006. Cox got it to Kirk. Over to Corey. Good kick to half forward. It's marked by Burton, who plays on. What's he going to do? He's going to have a 
ping of the goals. It's a thumping kick. That is magnificent from Burton. His second. Well, the ball got cleared from the centre, and Heath Shaw, Burton's opponent, just got lost. He was he just did. 15 metres behind him and uh, just completely lost Burton. And paid the penalty. Now, we're going to go and have a look at an incident involving Jonathan Brown and Craig Bolton. Old teammates. <laughs> and there they are. The big V by seven. Goods is in there. So is Joel Corey. He's wrapped up. And we'll have a secondary bounce. There's the umpire Cam. Well, that's fantastic. Having a look at Jamie Sharman and Fraser go at it. Down she goes. Wow. Charman got the tap. Davis a little give to uh, Bock. Couldn't quite control it. But here's McLeod back on the ground. Didn't have much of a break. Gives it off to Davis. Back to McLeod. As he goes into the pocket, he looks for Richardson and finds him. Beautiful pass. Yeah, this is interesting. Rich has played the entire quarter at full forward. It's the first time he's touched the ball. We're 26 minutes in, and I was, I was looking at Richo, and I just thought, gee, it might be time just to give him a run up on the wing. That McLeod saw him on the lead, and it's just a wonderful pass. Matthew Richardson will be desperate to kick this goal from right on the 50. Richo's got it. One point the difference. Is it just me this year? Matthew Richardson's kicking has improved dramatically. He's kicking for goal this year. <laughs> He'll kick 15 one game uh, quarters. Famous man said that about a decade ago. Yes, well, I'm, I'm going to change that. I'll say Buddy will kick 12 one day. <laughs> Charman against Simmons. Which way is it going? Jamie's free. Give it to Jamie. You take it. You take it, Voz. Yeah. Right there, Mark. Charman here, Yours now. Corns for Bock. Richo worked out early that it was going to the back. He's still waiting for it. Oh, Sean Bergwijn shaked off a couple. Kirk with the shot at goal. Not a big goal kicker, but they're in front. And the move's been made. Daniel Bradshaw, who's been playing so well at full forward for the Brisbane Lions, he's gone on to Richo. Jared White struggling in defence for Victoria at the moment. Charm in the tap. Oh, beautifully snared by Foley, though, for Victoria as he puts them inside 50. But strong attack on the footy was by Bock. And they've lifted about two or three notches, the Dream Team, in the last five minutes. They've got a taste of it now. There's John Cock marks at halfback. Vossi, you played with Daniel Bradshaw for a long, long time. How do you rate him as a fullback? I oh, know he's more than capable. More than capable. I thought after a knee reconstruction, he might have spent a little bit of time there for the Lions. But he's more than capable in that position. Griffin gives it back to Kirk, who handballs to Pavlich. He runs himself into trouble. Just handballs wildly. In there's Burgoyne, Sean Burgoyne. And he's gone for holding the ball, in fact, for a throw in the end. So free kick going Victoria's way. McLeod's had nine disposals for the quarter. By the way, for the Dream Team to help them lift. Bartel. Harvey bore a great fingertip of that one with Goodwin for company. Crisp kick into half forward. Bartel now Goods been quiet for a while. You can't keep him down for too long, Adam Goods. High ball for Vola's coming. Can't get there. Steve Johnson keeps it alive and gives Bock a bit of a shove, but all is fair. Ran his full measure, Hunter. And then some, Stephen. That's Jamie. Goods was the man up in the ruck. And there is Enright, the man got the tagging job on him this quarter. Chance there. And what's the umpire going to do? He's going to bounce. I mean, watching Matthew Pavlich, he's playing as a defender, and he's doing it really well, playing on Robert Murphy, playing tight, got touch on him. Then comes the umpire, and down it goes. Steve Johnson had a swing at it, missed. So did Pendlebury. Somehow got it to Chapman. 
who blazes away but puts it out of bounds on the full. So last minute of the third quarter, and it's the dream team in front of Victoria by just five points after at one stage trailing by 20 in this third term. Great fight back by the dream team. Have they got a nickname, the dream team, or not? Are they just the dream team? The dreamers. <laughs> I shouldn't ask a question you don't know the answer to. Cooney with a kick out of the top, gets it back with Corns' help. And again, Bock taking them out of defence to his teammate Burton. And Stokes to a one on two. Richo was the one. Bradshaw and Waite. Well, not a great handball. Waite kept the hands free, which was lucky. Bradshaw was able to ride out the journey. Scarlett. Some help from power if he needs it. He doesn't. He's oh, chopped off beautifully by Burgoyne. Burgoyne to the square. Richo! Free kick. Against Richo. Pushed him in the face. Thought that was okay tonight. <laughs> so a lucky let off there for yeah. Victoria. Seconds to go over. Yeah. Three quarter time, the dream team turning it around and they lead by five. Well, they were able to fight back there and it sort of was against the run of play, really. Victoria had control and they were moving through the middle of the ground. Fever was kicking some goals and they looked like they were completely on top. And then all of a sudden the dream team come out and they were able to get that extra run through the middle of the ground and started to open up their forward line and score frequently. So we're on for a good game for the last quarter. Sony, working with 10 to bring you all the best technological breakthroughs in our game. Sony's world of high definition connectivity. They now lead by five at the last change. Franklin and Davis, three apiece for the Dream Team for Victoria. Brendan for Vola leads away with four. Peter Burgoyne's been simply outstanding with 30 disposals as we look inside the huddles in the three-quarter time break. The messages from both teams, boys, well, it was pretty general, I would imagine. Just give what you got. Well, at this period of time, when you've got the players that you've got at your disposal, um, there's not a lot you can add at this point in time, but you know, they'll just be reinforcing some key points that they need Certainly from the um, dream team's perspective when they looked good They were able to move the ball quickly and gave their forwards every chance Kane Corns was really good in that third quarter Andrew McLeod lifted across the half back line Bock at half back was really good Enright did a, a good job on Adam Goods Let's go to Christy Moldhouse. Great news on Daniel Kerr, Christy Yes, yeah, Stephen, it all sounded a little bit dramatic at, at uh, half time, but we found out that Daniel Kerr has been to hospital. He has had the x rays and he has been given the all clear, so there is no break in his ankle. In fact, he's actually been up and running around, or not running around, but walking around with just a very slight limp in the tracksuit, so he actually looks to be okay. So good news for Daniel Kerr. Yeah, very pleasing indeed. So the Dream Team start the final term five points in front in this Hall of Fame tribute match. Charman got first hand to it to start the last quarter. There's the man of the moment, Peter Bergwijn, with disposal number 31. The best player on the ground tonight will be receiving the Allen Aylett medal. Here's Judd. Had a lot of time on the bench tonight, so maybe he Ross. might play out the fair bit of the last quarter. As Crows kicked to half forward for oh. time, he just didn't get a kind bounce. Corey Enright into the picture. The Charman cleverly taps it back in the direction of Enright. Hot on his heels is Harvey. McLeod into the picture. He'll be filthy on himself, Brent Harvey. Fumbling at that crucial time. Charman again, the tap again said by Peter Burgoyne. Desperate stuff. Goods is there. And that was out. 
Oh, I, think, I think Mark Williams realised that Peter Burgoyne was in such hot form at half back that he's decided to put him into the thick of the action in this last quarter. Tap by Simmons, but it went to Sean Burgoyne. The two uh, brothers doing lots of damage tonight, and his sweeping handball found Corns. Corns off the outside of the boot was clever to Richardson in front, couldn't quite take it. There's a high tackle, though, it's against Crow. And Matthew Richardson will have a shot at goal. Well, you call it quarters. Corns coming through the middle of the ground. He just kicked it on the outside of his foot. It was a very clever kick. And Richardson just strong enough to be able to hold his body over the ball. Shows desperation, wins the free kick. So Matthew Richardson for his second. Not this time for Richo. S still a bit of old Richo <laughs> coming through. It's a goal of difference. Dream team in front. They are. Brown to Kelly, suddenly surrounded. Brown was the get-out clause, and a good one, as it turns out. Although not a great kick, gave Goodwin the best look at it. Enright did enough to get it to McLeod, really starting to cut them up. Look at Cooney going to another gear. The Dream Team starting to show off all their silky skills. Brett Burton on the end of it really didn't do justice to the builder. Oh, they need to finish their work, though. When they've got that momentum, they need to finish their work. The what, about the, that, hasn't it? what about the step from Cooney, though? He landed like a cat on a hot tin roof, and off he went. Adam Goods striding confidently out of defence. Some protection from Judd. Not enough protection, as it turns out. Murphy chopped off nicely by Griffin. You know how elusive he is. Bolton and they have got some options on the outer side but uh, deciding to come back along the members side a little stodgy in the ball movement Peter Burgoyne just hit and hope to centre half forward Burton couldn't handle it Kelly gave an opportunity for Kelly for uh, Chapman but you can't count McLeod out was that a handball no. this ball's moving quickly and some quick go slick it, handball so slick it was a throw I think Jonathan Brown has to impose himself on this game at half forward for Victoria if they're to get get into the lead again. Scarlet to Mitchell to Simmons, who floats one inside 50, poor delivery, and it's uh, cut off by Rutten. Look a bit ragged at the moment, don't they? The they do, the Vicks, and there's just nice composure with the Dream Team. Kane Corns in the middle, Peter Burgoyne, Sean Burgoyne, and McLeod have just settled them right down. Cooney as well. John Cock has turned it over. Good mark by Pendlebury. Goes to Murphy. Who chips. It wasn't a good one. And John Cock again. He's had a great night too. In that defensive 50 arc. Motlock. Over the top to Sean Burgoyne. He loads up from 50. It's a goal on the dream team at the moment. Look the likely winners. What can Jonathan Brown do? Brandy, Brandy, Brandy. They want you working up 50. Up 50, you and Feb together. That was the message from the runner. He's hearing voices in his head, I think. <laughs> and what the runner's saying is you've got to push up further because the Victorian team's had it to the wings, but Brown and Feb have both been back near the goal square, so they haven't been able to kick a long ball to anyone at half forward who's got any size. Well done, Simmons. Good pen goods, Pendlebury and Mitchell. And the Victorian team can go forward. Harvey takes it cleanly this time. Won't fall for Vola. Oh, Fev. He's not finished with yet. High ball to the square. It still might be a Victorian goal. Oh, Chapman. Chance to go to his teammate. And he didn't want to miss that opportunity. It was a bit clumsy, wasn't he? But, gee, it was a wonderful pick up and turn by Favola. Was it a free? I'm oh, not too That's sure that was a free kick. We'll see, we count the time now, Jonathan. No, no, I was here. Well, two no, blocks I, I used to stay away from the right training. The That's Jamie right Charman and Jonathan yes. Brown. So seeing them both collide is right. <laughs> frightening. Look at this. One goal, two. Right. This is a great angle. It is. Have a look at this. Could be a bit scary here, wasn't it? <laughs> it looks good. They're not gone yet, the Vex. The Victorians a 17 minute drought. Jonathan Brown gets his second. And we heard the runner go out to Fev and Brownie to say push up a bit more. And uh, they've responded. A, a wonderful pickup by Favola and hooked to the goal square. 
And Brown able to uh, finish off after the free kick. Charman against Simmons. Good tap by Charman, but it's sharked by Bartel for Victoria. Throws it on the boot. Murphy, terrific mark at half four. And beautiful hands to Mitchell. And Mitchell hits for Bowler. Champagne football from the Big V, Robert Wells. Wow, listen to the crowd. Robert Murphy coming off. She's a gifted player. Instant handball. And Sam Mitchell just easy to put it to the leading Fev. It's an unusual grip, this, of the ball. You can see the left hand. To me, it's uh, probably up a bit high. Favola for goal number five. But I'm not going to uh, argue about that. And the Dream Team coach has put Andrew McLeod in at the centre bounce. Hey, listen to you, Michael. <laughs> you make a good coach one day, Vossi. <laughs> well, I'd like to think my ego would say that he did it at least anyway. <laughs> Lots of goals for grassroots footy from Toyota. There's your man, McLeod. Oh, in amongst four was Buddy Franklin. The only man down was Leon Davis, who tried to do too much and paid the penalty. Jaji, the intensity's lifted. The crowd are getting right into this game now with scores level. Fraser, plethora of options. Steve Johnson, not a bad one. Oh, that was great, strong defence from Pavlich. Jonathan Brown said, if you're going to get your fist on that, Andrew, you're going to earn it. And look at the look he got. He's shaking him up. <laughs> Anything could happen in this last quarter, I reckon. <laughs> They're going to get pretty serious. A fair bit of pride on the line for these blokes. Andrew McLeod looked at Brown as if, mate, we're marketing mates. <laughs> Don't do that to me. Brown off for a break, by the way. Not a great kick to half four, but it might yet fall. Kelly did well. Did very well, as it turned out. Wait. Tough one. Mitchell was well aware of what was around him. Scarlett with those sensational defensive skills. Turning their attack on Goods. Well closed in on him there. They did well to tackle Goods and not give away a free kick. Daniel Motlock with some tricks. Oh, what about an option? Leon Davis, Franklin. Perfect oh, kick. Was never going to miss that. Perfect kick. Almost impossible for Crow to get a spoil on it. And we'll watch Buddy probably run out to his left. Cop that. Oh, that's a base yeah, shot. Sure, Buddy bend in half, didn't oh, he? It's 104 kilos hitting you. <laughs> so, Buddy Franklin. One of the star attractions at the MCG tonight. Just can't make it. You know, he averages nine shots at goal a game this year, which is quite extraordinary. It's frightening, isn't it? Well, he's only just started to learn how to play the game really well at this level. Like, I think there's so much improvement in him that is frightening. Only 21 years of age, Lance Franklin. Scarlett finds weight. He plays on the Mitchell. Oh, handball's a wild one. Scarlett tackled by Franklin and Griffin, forced to release. Just did so in the nick of time. And a good stoppage there for the Dream Team. There's Jonathan Brown on the sidelines. Selwood preparing to come back on. Who do you reckon's in line for the Alan Aylett medal, boys? Scarlett would certainly be one of the competitors. Peter Burgoyne has to be close. Racer two, I reckon. Hutto, you got it there. And there's the forward line for Victoria. We saw Favola. There's now a smaller forward line for Victoria. They've sort of said, look, Fev's going all right. He's moving well. Let's give him a bit of space. Yeah, Favola, Steve Johnson. And up in front of Johnson is Bartel, who can take a good mark for a medium-sized player. Cox beaten to it by Fraser. McLeod let loose. John Cock. No. That could be 52. No, not played. Gee, there's a lot of play on at the moment. Yeah. And there's a lot of space to roam in. Chapman needed an accommodating bounce. Davis couldn't complete the tackle. He did oh, the well second done. time on well Scarlett, done. though. That is a top effort. Scarlett never says die. Stokes looking for a free. Kearney didn't need one. Now they can go to work. Buddy Franklin, he doesn't go to work. He comes out to play. <laughs> but he just couldn't nail it. 3-3 mm. to Buddy. Mitchell, five disposals in this last quarter for Victoria. The dream team by two points. If it is a tie, we have five minutes each way. 
Mitchell again, number six for him this quarter to Kelly. Kicks in the direction of Chapman against his Geelong teammate Enright. So there's another catch, Selwood. They're everywhere. Now Brown pops it up to the tip of the goal square. Goodwin got a fist on it. Did he get a touch? It's a goal! Well, the goal up, I said, it was not touched. Goodwin didn't argue the point. Not much point anyway. Let's have a look at it. Oh, impossible to tell. The goal umpire has given it six points, and that's all that matters. And the goal goes to Campbell Brown. Well, it was only a layer of skin if he did miss it. It was only a layer of skin, the difference. <laughs> Mark Williams certainly into it. Campbell Brown does his lap of honour, going right to the other end of the ground. Margin four. I tell you what, you've got to hand it to Josh Fraser. Jody's just come on the ground and sneaked up into the forward 50 for the Vicks. Josh Fraser's worked really hard in Brown, the ruck. Brown obviously ready to come back as well. Falls initially for Goodwin, but he was over, over, overrun it. Well done, Stokes. Pick the pocket now, McLeod versus Kelly. Kelly's had a good quarter for Victoria. Pendlebury locked up, but there's more Victorian numbers there. Finally creative for Fraser. For Vola's the long option. He's the main option. He's the star. He's never had such good delivery, was he? Yeah, with all due respect. Yeah, I think you're probably right. Josh Fraser's lipped off too, boys. He has, yeah. He's been really good, Josh Fraser. I think Fev loves centre stage. Big crowd, big build-up. I don't think he likes it. I know he likes it. Five goals, too. He doesn't like it, was he? He loves it. As soon as Josh Fraser got that ball down to Favola, boys, he took himself straight to the bench, spoke to the physio and the doctor, came off very, very proper. You can see him there. They inspected there was somewhere on the right knee, right leg area. They've taken him downstairs now for further treatment. Victoria by 10. Quick back-to-back -back goals has put them in front. Simmons the tap from the centre bounce. Bartels wrapped up by Joel Corey. Secondary bounce in the centre square. From memory, uh, Wolsey Bock went back on to Favola a few weeks ago when uh, Adelaide played Carlton and did a good job. I wonder whether he would stick with Rutten on him. Yes, well, they've had some good contests, those two. Solid mark by Kelly at halfback. And at the moment, Bolton's been moved back onto Fev. Selwood. And Rutten onto Jonathan Brown. Kick found Harvey to Bartel. Floats it to the 50. Tough one for Shaw to trap. Here's Chapman. Stokes is there too. Couldn't rip the ball out of Chapman's arm. Chapman's snap. Oh. And it's a point. 11 the difference in favour of the big V. Just work to play on at every opportunity, Victoria, in this quarter. Just a lot of boldness in their play. 60 to 35 to disposals for the quarter. Bit lacks the days of in defence. Still some issues down there for John Cox. Somehow they get out of it. Ben Rutten. Big ball for Pavlich. The flow of the ball has changed so much through the course of this game. Anything could happen from here. Well, so much talent laden through both sides. Big ball for full forward. Motlop. Burton stayed down. He anticipated it beautifully. Kelly with the tackler there. Luke oh. Power on the bottom. And again, Burton copying all the heat. Hey, go straight up. So down to the last half of the last quarter. Goods again being the third man up all night with such effect. Burton was able to anticipate the move. Help from Richo. Kicks probably not Richo's strength, so he gets another crack out. 
Decides the handball this time. Peter Burgoyne guided it beautifully for Brett Kirk. Can he get the distance? Brett, Brett, Brett Kirk, Brett Kirk. You would think so. This, but yeah, I suppose he's going to kick from 50, isn't he? It's going to be right on the limit. He doesn't Hello, look overly that? confident. Hey, look. Run away, please. Some deep breaths. No, Kirk doesn't have the shot. Yeah, he knew his limitations. He would have struggled to have made the distance 45 out, so he squared it. He's done the correct thing, and uh, Goodwin should have no problems. Simon Goodwin. Been a successful experiment to send him forward this year. Kicked 20 goals so far. And still averaged 21 disposals. And he's got that one online where it counted. So they're still kicking. First goal in 15 minutes to the Dream Team. They trail by five. There's Josh Fraser feeling that right knee. Play! All taken by Simmons to Bartell. Now Harvey kicks. In the Brown direction, he's up against Rutten. Brown claims the mark and has awarded it. Rutten not happy. Just came on Jonathan Brown. Chris Judd taken off. And Mark Thompson making rapid changes in that forward area. I don't think I've seen a game where Rutten has been beaten so many times one-on-one. -on -one. I think he may have got a tattoo into that one by the look of the replay. I mean, it's so unusual. You nearly get, need to go out and buy a lotto ticket. So the skipper's kicked two vital goals for his team. This for number three and give them a bit more breathing space. So it looks like Bock replacing Rutten going to Brown. Mark Williams has rejoined us, said Mark. <laughs> It's going to be going to go right down to the wire by the look of things. You talking to me? Oh. Yep, we are. Yeah, sorry. That's all right. Yeah, it sure looks that way, doesn't it? I thought it was touch. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, we, we thought it was as well. But... Oh, that's amazing. Who was the umpire there? <laughs> I'm not sure. But no, uh, it wouldn't have happened. You, you, in the end, uh, you've made the move in defence. So they're looking dangerous down there. You've, you've brought uh, Bock on. Yeah, yeah. We've, uh, you know, trying to rotate, make sure everyone's uh, getting a go and uh, trying, to, trying to stop them. Obviously, it would be a lot easier if we get the ball out of the centre square ourselves, which is terrific. What um, was the instructions at three-quarter time? Uh, look, uh, the boys are real keen to run them. Uh, you know, we put McLeod in the centre square like Fossey told us to, and the uh, Moon should have got that one all by himself. Anyway, um, and he put a lot of, uh, you know, run around the ball in the centre square, so... It's... Uh, it gave us a good chance to, uh, you know, to win, and uh, that's what we're trying to do. Uh, we changed the kickouts, and uh, you know, we got a couple of turnovers from their kickouts as well. So that was that was pretty good. I think the uh, the centre square to inside 50 has probably hurt us this quarter. Sounds like it's getting pretty intense for you, Chuck. I will let you go. Thanks for that. No worries, Chris. Gee, but, Mooney hasn't had much of a night, has he? Well, he did well there. To, didn't you think to lock the ball in against four or five? Should have taken the mark. Oh, okay. I, I, uh, I would like to see Pavlich, who's playing at half-back, go forward. Because Mooney's really struggling. Well, Pick another one here will just about kill the Dream Team's chances. Good desperate. spoil, Bock. Yeah, desperate defence from Bock. Now Murphy. Chance here to just about ice the game, the big V. Murphy goes sideways and finds power. He, I don't know how many times Luke Power has passed to advantage inside the forward 50. I would think at least four times he has set teammates, teammates up for a set shot at goal. Well, I know when I played with him, Walsey, that uh, when he was outside 50, you always got on the move because you knew he would hit you. That, that is his trademark kick, that probably 20-metre kick to your advantage. So Paul Chapman with the football. The Vicks lead by 11. Now an even two goals. Dream team still alive, but only just. Can we just say, too, that uh, we are most grateful to the, both coaches tonight, Bomber Thompson 
and Mark Williams for their wonderful cooperation, giving us an insight into their thoughts. Oh, it's just sensational yep. that they they are prepared to do that. Do you reckon they'll do it from now on, Walsy? Oh, that, you wouldn't expect them to do it in a uh, in a uh, AFL game. This is an exhibition match, you know, not quite the pressure of a, of a uh, AFL match. McLeod to Pavlitz, they're building here the dream team. They know the time is just sneaking away from them a little. Kane Corns, delicate kick for Franklin. Well, will he have a shot? I think he might. 3-3, three, three. hello, he's kicked. And he's put the mouth guard in the shorts. We'll oh. watch him when he lines it up. He will always run out to his left and then look to hook it in. Crowd getting very excited with this kick. So excited they're doing the wave. So he's got 3-3. Three, three. The odds are that when the pressure's on, it's late in the game, but you can back Lance Franklin. He's shown that before. Mark Thompson, just to, you, what you didn't want to see, Mark. Yeah, exactly right, guys. Um, yeah, it's a good game of footy. Thought we had control of it, but... Uh, Goal the difference. To go and, uh, it's anybody's game. And, uh, and Bomber, now we know it's an exhibition match, but real, what does this mean? To be able to get away with a win for the big V, what does it mean? Oh, we've been one to win all night, mate. Yeah. It uh, means a fair bit, I reckon. Yeah. The players of uh, both teams have been super. They're, they're straight, everything at it's been a great game, but in the end, you don't want to go through all this work and not get a result. Mark, will your players ice the clock in the last couple of minutes if they're eight or ten points up? Um, probably. Unfortunately, guys, it might be the only negative ever game. We'll let you go, Mark. We yeah. really, we really appreciate your help tonight. Okay, thanks. Thomas Thompson there, coach of the Vicks. Suddenly, six points the difference. It's right on here. Frantic last few minutes coming up. Well, could we have extra time? If it's a draw, that's what we'll play. Five minutes each way. It is Victoria by a goal. Here's Pavlich. Didn't get a clear handball away. Now Brett Harvey. He looks for Johnson. Couldn't quite find him. Now the ball's in dispute. Mitchell can't grab it. Joel Corey could. He couldn't hit a target by hand. Turnover. Here's a chance for Harvey. the dream team. <laughs> He's up. <laughs> Wolsey, your mantle is the last victorious Victorian coach. He's slipping away. You've been hanging on to that for a long time too, might I say. It's not over yet though. There's still time. Look at this. There's still stars in this dream team forward line that could kick goals like Brett Kirk. Kept it moving. The Victorian oh, left so. Kelly turned it over. Made good. He's Ordinary work and got it again and gave it to Mitchell. Gee, it's opened up forward now. For Jonathan Brown, wouldn't he like one more go? But he's going to get it with the free kick. Gee, that ball came bullet-like at him. And Troy Simmons just has to ruck the game out for the Victorians. Josh Fraser's gone. There's the big fella there. He got the message about four minutes ago. And it said you've got to stay there to the end because Fraser's no good. It's all ahead of Jonathan Brown. He can seal the deal with this one. <laughs> or not. Oh, it had to be Steve Johnson, didn't it? Just knows how to get in the right places at the right time. He'll kick this. Here's the Ute new look at it. He likes it. He loves it. So three goals to Steve Johnson and his Vic teammates rush through and they know the game's over now. Well, it means a lot to them, Quarter. I think there's more pressure on the Victorian players than the Dream Team because they've got uh, a proud tradition to uphold and they've been told that all through the week they've looked at vision of Victoria playing, whereas the Dream Team boys, look, they're, they're wonderful players, they're champions in their own right, but there's no history of a Dream Team. And 69,294 here tonight is a great crowd. As Murphy puts it on the left, a bit of icing on the Victorian cake here. Brown attacked it as only he knows how. Couldn't quite get that mark. And the ball goes out wide to Cox. 
Cox chips to half forward. Here's Davis. He's got a loose teammate in the goal score, but he goes shorter to Franklin, who missed a couple of vital goals early in this last quarter. He's still got four goals, three, so seven scoring shots for the game. Rob, and this will be scoring shot number eight. Yes, and we mentioned he averages nine shots a game so far this season, and uh, he will be the player of the next decade, I believe. So Franklin has missed. So four goals, four to Buddy. In fact, make that four goals, five. So he's had his nine scoring shots, Rob. Well, there you go. I wonder if the Vicks will ice the clock as we suggested, Vossi, or whether they'll go all out and try to get another goal or two. Adam Goods for Pendlebury. I think the signal's gone out just to hold it up, chip it around. Been good for this man with the ball, had a wretched season last year with the Tigers with injury. So right across the ground, just giving a little bit of a sneak peek for the uh, Dream Team, but no mistakes. Bradshaw been at both ends tonight. And that is a thunderous roar, the Big V. Victoria have triumphed over the Dream Team by 17 points in the Hall of Fame tribute match at the MCG in front of almost 70,000 people. Jimmy Barnes has ever been a theme song before, but he is now. And we'll see something we don't see often in the modern game is the boys swapping jumpers, Robin Michael. Yeah, isn't that terrific? Uh, just a wonderful touch. And there you go, there, two fellas there. Have a look at that, the affection for each other. Let's get down to Andrew Barr. It's a pretty pumped uh, captain of the big white V, mate. How did that feel? Oh, sensational, wasn't it? Uh, she was obviously a great game of footy, and uh, the boys got over the line. Uh, it was a courageous last quarter. Courageous last quarter by you two. You had to work hard to get yourself up for it. What did it mean to you to actually get out here tonight? Oh, it's about yeah, yeah, child, childhood dream, you know. You watch EJ and all the boys uh, back when we were a young fella and uh, just tried me very best to get up for it and uh, I thought I was right to go. Very proud to be out here with these bunch of bikes. They put in a, showed a lot of heart tonight and uh, this will go down. It's one of me, I suppose, alongside the Premiership, it's one of my best memories. And you showed a lot of heart too, Jonathan. Well done, mate. Thanks, Andy. Back to you, lads. So, Jonathan Brown, three goals. Passed a fitness test, led his team to victory tonight as the players from both teams swap jumpers in the middle of the MCG. We'll take a break. Victoria by 17.